What's up guys? Welcome back to the creek. Actually, we're back out here at the farm today. If you haven't seen the first video of my $700 auction crane truck, you're going to go ahead and click the link up here. And if you don't see it up there, it's down below in the old description there. So anyway, I picked this truck up at the Ritchie Brothers auction. This is a 1989 F800 with a National Series crane on it that'll pick 16,000 some odd pounds. Pretty good sized crane. Got it for a song and a dance on account of Dun, dun, dun. the old big block there underneath the tarp locked up tighter than a drum so in the last video you guys saw me snatch that up out of the hood there pop her down here on the ground and uh we're not exactly in a shop setting but i yanked the heads off of that thing diagnosed it to be a stuck top end and the first thing i thought to do when i saw that was well I guess if I really wanted to be cheap about this, I could just knock out the pistons that are stuck, hone the living crap out of it, slap it back together. But I thought, no, no, everybody on YouTube will rip me a new one for that, saying that that's the most shade tree way to do it. Well, boys, we are in fact under a shade tree. And that's exactly what we're going to do, because everybody in the comments was like, yeah, just knock the piston out and hone the crap out of it. So you guys took the words out of my mouth. If nobody's going to criticize me for doing it, I'm sure some of you still will. I'm going to do it. So as long as the majority of you aren't going to be screaming at me in the comments for doing it, we're going to rebuild this engine out here in the middle of the woods today. I'll call this a shade tree rebuild because, you know, shade tree. Anywho, let's get started. While we are not working in the comfort of a shop, I can bring some of the comforts of the shop here. So I brought out an engine stand today, so we'll hurry up and get this uh, 429 mounted up to this engine stand and then we'll start ripping into her some more come on no snakes no snakes no snakes nope cockroach but no snakes yep fun fact this is copperhead season in our area i don't really think this is the kind of place a copperhead would want to hang out they hang down more by the creek but you know still not really something you want to come in contact with. What a gem. Before I get too carried away here and have to tear off a bunch of more stuff before I can get it mounted up here on the engine stand, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the head off the other side just to make for sure that there isn't any catastrophic failure. I suspect there's probably some uh, rust seizing on this side too, so we'll get this head off of here and see how bad it is. Uh, because it might not be honable on this side just because this side is doesn't mean this side isn't so you know before I waste too much time on it and there is a plan B this is a 429 I'd like to put a 460 in it but the neighbor just up the road here gave me this 370 the other day that uh, for sure runs he drove the truck to where he started ripping it apart so he said it runs good, it was low miles farm truck. So he gave me that engine for nothing. I had to give my man a case of beer. Sure appreciate that. So that's what it's all about. Good neighbors helping each other out. So he was gonna scrap it and I said, I've got a better use for that. So let's get this head ripped off of here and see if we can't use a 429 instead though. You know, I really got to hand it to Ford on this engine. Uh, they have done such a good job engineering this thing. Uh, it's incredible. They've, they probably had to really take so much time to engineer this thing so that if you wanted to take off one thing, you have to take off the entire front of the motor, okay? 
all I wanted to do was take out that bolt right there and that one down inside of there where this wiring harness comes up through. But see, to get to that bolt there, I had to loosen the belt, take the belt off the compressor, unmount the compressor, unbolt the, undo the hose going from the bottom of the compressor so you could pull the compressor up out of the way. Now I have to unbolt these four bolts just to get to that one little stinking bolt. And there's probably something else I'm forgetting too. Okay, it's time for the big reveal. I got the air compressor out of the way. I got the two bolts here out of the accessory mounting brackets. So we should be able to just give her a little tappy tap and she'll come right off. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be worse than that side because these rockers here and the push rods were all pretty rusty. When I leaned the engine over this way, a little bit of water came out of this uh, port here. So uh, probably not real good, but we'll go ahead and give her a look. that is it's almost like clay down here in the cylinder no idea what that is big chunks of it so here's what was behind door number two this cylinder here looks beautiful uh, you can still see the cross hatch in it I don't feel any bad lips or ridges or anything in there this guy here has a mountain of stuff in it and it was kind of like that puffy rust and I thought at first it was real, real bad, but actually it's not that bad. I could run my finger right through it. This doesn't feel too rough down here. Uh, I'd say that this side, this cylinder here, uh, it's got some pitting on the top. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to say that this cylinder is about the same as that one on the other side that's bad. Uh, of course, this guy here, I can't see anything on it. Could be bad behind the piston. But this guy here what was full of diesel fuel from me force feeding her you see this stuff look at that i i can't figure out what the heck that is i mean it's like dirt like just straight mud you guys ever seen anything like that in an engine I, I got no idea what that is but it doesn't feel crazy bad it is pitted up for sure got a good ridge up here a rust ridge not a wear ridge um let's let's get some rags to soak up this diesel fuel out of here and we can have a little look at them better so i was kind of worried before cleaning these out here but i've got them cleaned out now and i'm feeling pretty confident actually that one looks really good this one here uh what i can see of it just has some surface rusting nothing too crazy um I don't see any heavy pitting anywhere and the same for this one uh, it's got a little more surface rust than the previous one but I took the screwdriver and kind of knocked off some of it already and it doesn't seem like there's any serious pitting uh, definitely the top side looking the worst but feeling pretty confident if I can drive these things out of here and then hone the living crap out of them that uh, she will again turn over now of course i haven't gotten into the bottom end and seen if there's any issues there as you guys saw when i drained the oil there was water in it so uh but it's obvious we know where the water came from a lot of you were saying head gasket but uh i don't think so scooter now, somebody else in the comments said that these were terrible designs with fords because of the hood line the hood split right over top of the intake on the gas engines and basically your air filter housing turned into a funnel when it would rain it would puddle up there and if the thing sat it would get water down in there and build up and have this problem here so uh seems to be the consensus it seems pretty accurate because i got two of them sitting here with the same issues 
So let's go ahead and get this thing thrown up on the stand now. I was going to take the clutch and everything off so I could mount it on the engine stand, but I think I'm going to try and cheat it, steal the bell housing off of that engine, just throw it on here, and then mount it up with the bell housing bolts. So before I put it away here too, I wanted to show you this is the underside of that head I just took off. Uh, it's ugly, but it should clean up just fine. Amazingly, I did the old hammer test on the valves. None of them are stuck. There's that mysterious gunk I've seen there before. I don't know what that is. That's that's pretty wild. Yeah, so ugly, but should be just fine. These don't need to be even as nice as the cylinder wall. So we'll hit those good with a wire wheel before we put it back together. She'll be good as gold. <laughs> Alrighty, well we got our 429 on the stand here, and since I stabbed her on there by the bell housing, we do have a little bit more extra, extra weight hanging out there, kind of taking the center of gravity further outward, but it seems to be pretty stable. The trick's going to be when I go to roll it upside down here to take the pan off, that'll be sketchy, but uh, you know, just stand clear of it if it falls over. Oh well. Okay, with our block upside down here, we can go ahead and remove our oil pan and see what treasures lie beneath. Good news, it's not too rusty in here. Yeah, what you guys think about that? That don't look too bad in here. You can definitely tell somebody's been in here before. All the rods and caps are numbered. Uh, there's a lot of cross hatch visible in the cylinders, so that's a good sign. See a teeny little bit of surface rust on this guy here, was at number two. Some again on three, very little though. I mean, just very little. Nothing that would even hold the pistons from moving. So that's good. That means all the rust that I can see is on the rings. Uh, which, you know, typically you wouldn't say that was good. But in this case, that's good. We should be able to just take these rods off, drive them out, hone the crap out of it, and slap it back together. And complete our shade tree rebuild. Okay, well I rolled this thing up to where this bank is eye level and we can work on it. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna take a scraper first. And this is the only cylinder on this side that appears that it's bad. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take a putty scraper or maybe even just a screwdriver or razor blade, something. And I'm gonna scrape all the heavy rust off of the cylinder first. Like the, the, it's not heavy, but you know, just as much as I can, I'm gonna try and make it as smooth as possible with a scraper blade. That way we don't just junk up my hone and rip the stones all up on it. And then after I get the big stuff out, we'll throw the hone in there, hone out what we can, and then we'll pop the rod off and try and drive this sucker out. This is the first one we uncovered in the first video.
Okay, that actually cleaned up really well, even just with uh, just with a scraper. What I'm doing now, I'm just going to spray some oil in here to help clean this thing out. I'm going to wipe it out good with a rag before we get the hone in there. Try to get all the big debris out. I think I see one pit, just one teeny little pit. It's like the size of a pencil tip. And I don't think it's going to matter once we hone it. I think it's going to be nice and smooth. I don't think it's going to be anything to worry about. Can you see that right there? Right there at the corner of the screwdriver. One teeny little pit. Not much at all. But I think it cleaned up really well. I mean, that's... Heck, you would probably get away without even honing that, honestly. But I'm gonna, just because we have it at this part. Keep in mind, I have absolutely no evidence to back up this claim but I have always been of the thought when you're honing something if you just kind of want to give it a polish you use a heavier a thicker oil and then if you wanted to use if you actually want to do some cutting and take a little bit of material then you use a thinner oil so uh, I'm not I can still see the cross hatch in this thing so it was probably bored out and rebuilt and very little runtime on it since then so I'm not afraid to take just a little bit of material out of here. So I'm just going to use some thin oil. And like I said, I could be dead wrong about this. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. But I'll just lube her up with some blaster here. Jam her in the old holes. And like I said, right now we're just doing this to uh, get the piston out. And then we're going to do the whole thing. We're not going to go too long. There we go. That's all it takes to polish that thing up nice by the looks of it. Yeah, still got that little teeny pit up here I can feel. But other than that, I think it should come out. It's good when you're uh, working on something out here that just make sure you drop every single piece in the dirt. That way it gets a good even coating of dusty dirt. It really helps uh, longevity in engines. There we go. Oh yeah, these bottom end bearings look beautiful still. No marks or roughness or anything. They look and feel great. Same with the caps. Caps got a nice cross hatch in them. Uh, another fun part, trying to drive this thing out of here without damaging anything. Oh yeah, it's moving. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Feeling good now. Out yet? He could go all the way. We're not. Could get jammed up in the end zone. Oh, why? There it is. Yeah. We all think about that. Oh yeah, really not too bad in here. Not too bad at all. Right up there where I said there was that one little pit that I showed you guys. That's the only thing still. I, I can still feel that with my fingernail, but I think that's just gonna have to be what it is. That's the worst of it right up top there. And it really doesn't look too too bad so we can uh we can start honing now here's the piston that come out of there too it doesn't look bad at all the, i managed not to break the rings or anything the rings are seized in there so it's going to take a little bit of work with a pick and uh 
maybe let it soak in some evapo rust maybe i don't know we'll try and get those off of there and we're ready to start our honing here so we'll go ahead and soak the old cylinder down that ought to be plenty I always do that and try and get the stones a little wet first. Spray some more in there on them. This is tough right now because uh, I'm hitting the crank if I go too deep. Gotta, gotta be the machine here. Oh, yep. Went too deep. Caught the, caught the crank. About tore up the hone. Looking good. Just gonna keep doing a little bit at a time, wiping it out, checking it again. Except for where that pit spot is, you'd never know that this thing ever had rust in it. So I got her cleaned up looking pretty nice there. We got a good looking cross hatch. Uh, there is still, like I said, there's that pit up there, you know, a little brown spot still, but all you can really feel is the one little pit right there. And after all, this is a shade tree rebuild. So uh, I'm not gonna go get too concerned about it. I'm gonna soak a nice clean rag down in gasoline, and wipe that bore out real good and uh, ready to move on to the next one. All right, I got the engine rolled up the other way now. Here's those other two bad cylinders. They're not pretty, but hopefully they'll buff. It's just a farm truck. Anyway, the process is going to be exactly the same on this side. I'm just going to scrape as much as I can with a putty knife first and then uh, clean them up good and drive them out of there. I can't get the hone in on this side because these pistons aren't down far enough like I did on the other side, but anyway, let's get to it. There we go. That was a tight fit. The uh, the rod here was hitting on the, or the stud here was hitting on the crank journal. Whew. This one's definitely rustier than the other side. So after wiping her out good, there's what she looks like inside. Definitely not the greatest looking. Uh, it's it's worse worse down here of course where the water would have pulled up it's a little too bright for you guys isn't it still too bright ah the lighting's a pain here and trying to get you guys the best angle i can but it's just uh just kind of rough up here 
not too bad. I don't feel any pits like on the other side actually. So we might come out better over here. So on the crank side here, I was gonna take out this one next. This is the last one that I have to uh, knock out of here. And of course this nut's easily accessible, but the way it's rotated right now, this guy, although it doesn't look that hard, it's got a bad angle on it right now. You really can't get anything in there the way there's casting right here and everything. Can't get a wrench, can't get a swivel socket, nothing. So I probably could get a, a swivel socket on a quarter inch drive but uh, my quarter inch only goes up to half inch that I have out here. So, not going to happen. What I think I come up with a new plan, I'm just going to take off all the caps and rods that I can. And we'll drive everything out of here. That way we can check every cylinder too. That way we don't miss anything if there is any other issues. And then uh, hopefully whatever, it seems like I'll be able to get to everything except, except this one, two, two here that I won't be able to get to. Uh, to get the caps off so hopefully we can get those two to turn after the other five are out or Oh, she's moving. I'm using this steel drift just to get it moving, uh, I like to switch over to the wood here. The steel I'm able to put on, there's a ledge. I'll show you here. See on the inside of the piston, back side of the piston here, there's a big uh, a ledge in here that's nice and square, and it's got a lot of meat to it. So that's where I'm using that steel at, hoping not to damage anything. And then uh, the wood I can put up here somewhere. I'm definitely not using the steel at all up here where the wrist pin goes through because I'm afraid to damage that fit right there. There we go. That one was galling in there pretty good. But the cylinder doesn't look too bad. Just decided I'm taking this last piston out. I figured out why it's not turning though. This bell housing that I have it suspended by is a donor from that other motor and the clutch is different. The clutch is actually hitting the bell housing that I have on here right now. So it's uh, bounded up. So I guarantee you if we just slack the bolts off in this thing, it would spin. But if I do that, the motor's gonna fall. So we'll keep it suspended for now. We'll do all our cylinder work first and then I guess I'm gonna have to bite the bullet because I don't want to put this thing together and never turn it over. I'm going to bite the bullet, pull it off of here, strip the clutch off, mount it up on the stand how it's supposed to be, which I guess I should have just done from the beginning. But there's no work like the rework. Well, there's your problem right there. I drunk that last piston out of there. I was rolling the engine around to try and, uh, you know, just take a good look at all the cylinders, keep her right side topwards for the night. And, uh, you know... The cheapo depot engine stand just kind of let loose there on me so i guess now's as good as time as any to uh zap that thing the rest of the way off of there and i can take all these brackets home and re-weld those because 
they all failed every one of them i mean in their defense i i, I had another 10 12 inches extending that weight out there but even still this thing's rated for 750 pounds i know there's no way that thing weighs that much so this thing's just garbage Well guys, after that minor little setback, I did come home and I fixed all my brackets so I could rehang that engine, but now the weather the last few days have been keeping me out of the woods there. It's been just kind of dreary and rainy, not really exactly great weather for trying to rebuild an engine. So I've been uh, wanting to get back out there and get this finished. I was hoping to have it finished up for you guys this week, but uh, I just couldn't make it happen. So staying tuned next week I'm gonna have the second part of this I hope to have that engine at least back together and ready to put in the truck if not put into the truck and ready to fire up so if you like the video don't forget to give me a big old thumbs up and if you're new around here if you would please consider hitting that subscribe button check out the channel I've got a ton of awesome content I put out in the past and bringing more to you every week but that's enough of my rambling appreciate you stopping by and I'll catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching later